This is to help you to complete um, the second revision uh, worksheet on the USA, okay? And this is going to focus on the divided society. So problems and challenges in the 1920s, okay? Problems and challenges that America faced. You will need to use the revision guide, okay? Um, that is labelled America 1920 to 1973, opportunity and then inequality okay and you'll need pages um, 24 to 31 of that revision guide to help you complete this okay so you've got this worksheet here uh, that we have produced okay and I would like you to use the revision guide to complete the worksheet as much as possible please on your own and then in a minute I'm going to go through my completed version okay just be careful when you're reading these questions. So, for example, some of them ask you to actually do a couple of things. So it says here, uh, prohibition, name two groups that campaigned for alcohol to be banned and give their reasons why. OK, so don't just name those two groups, actually explain why they wanted alcohol to be banned. OK, so just make sure when you're reading those questions that you are fully answering them. Um, and then you're to finish off looking at this 12 mark question at the uh, at the bottom of the worksheet. OK, so if we just have a look at this 12 mark question before you start to um, answer it, there's some advice on here. OK, so the 12 mark question is asking you to have a look at the Ku Klux Klan and please the Red Scare and come up with an overall uh, conclusion which has the greatest impact on America okay does the Ku Klux Klan have the greatest impact or is it actually the Red Scare and we would like you to please do that in a format of a P paragraph so just to remind you a P paragraph is point so basically what impact um, does that group so the KKK for example um, have on America, the 1920s. And then you need some evidence, okay, some facts, some dates, some statistics. And then you need to explain, um, you know, how does this show, how does this evidence um, show the impact the Ku Klux Klan had? Okay. So be really clear on that. You need to make sure, please, that you're using that point evidence and explanation for both, both the Ku Klux Klan and then the Red Scare. I take that as two separate paragraphs. And then you need to end, please, with a conclusion, okay? Which had the greatest impact? Does the Ku Klux Klan have the greatest impact or does the Red Scare, okay? Make sure you're using those key terms like lynching, uh, Palmer raids. You shouldn't be taking more than 20 minutes to write this. Okay, so that hopefully will give you just a bit of an idea of the structure and how to end up writing that 12 mark question. But we will have a look at it in a bit more detail in a minute. Okay, so pause the video and come back to it once you have completed this worksheet because then I'll go through my completed version. Okay. Right, brilliant. I'm going to go through now my completed version. As you can see, there's quite a lot of information on here, so I will go through this with you. So, two groups um, that campaigned for alcohol to be banned. I've got the Anti-Saloon League and I've got religious groups, in particular temperance groups, okay? So, the Anti-Saloon League, uh, they felt alcohol led to violence and crime, so that's the group and the reason why they wanted it banned. And then religious groups, they claimed it created social problems such as poverty, addiction and debt. OK, the next thing's quite straightforward. Uh, define a speakeasy, so it's an illegal bar. Uh, moonshine, which is homemade uh, spirits that is sometimes so strong that it caused serious illness. OK, I just added that on there, but it's homemade spirits, moonshine. OK. The next bit is two reasons for why the Prohibition Asians couldn't enforce the law. I've actually come up with four here that they use in the uh, 
revision guide so you can have any two of these, okay? So uh, please try and make sure that you've got these kind of facts, the statistics, because they really do help um, you answer these questions in detail in the exam. So you've got things like there are only 1,500 prohibition agents and the USA has over... 18,600 uh, miles of coastline and land borders. So that's the coast and the borders between things like Mexico and Canada. These people are not going to be able to uh, easily patrol those areas to prevent alcohol being smuggled in by sea or by land. So that's just impossible. Okay. Millions of people are actually willing to break the law and continue drinking. Apparently, even the uh, the president at the time still uh, drank his whiskey, uh, so he was prepared to break the law. Um, the third reason I've got down there is easy to get hold of alcohol uh, because you've got criminal gangs who are involved in making and supplying it. So they ran things like the speakeasies, the illegal bars. They sold bootlegged alcohol. That's illegally bought alcohol. You know, that could be from the borders of Canada and Mexico or uh, moonshine, so homemade spirits. And the speakeasies were hidden in cellars and private hotel rooms, just for example. So it's hard for them, prohibition agents, to actually find they speak easies and it's hard for them to stop them. And also those gangs, uh, gangsters who were making and supplying alcohol, uh, they made so much money they were able to actually avoid arrest or prosecution because they bribed everybody. They bribed the police, prohibition agents, border guards, judges, etc. Okay. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the problems that prohibition agents had. Um, right, who's Al Capone? So I've got quite a bit of information here on him. He is uh, what we call a gangster, so an organised crime leader. Just some facts about him. At the height of his power, he made $2 million a week through organised crime. Um, and he ran it like a business, very much like a business. Organised crime leaders were rarely arrested or charged um, because they controlled the police, like we said up here, they bribed them. And also no witnesses are ever going to want to come forward against them. They're worried that they might be killed or their families might be killed, etc. Um, what ends up happening to Al Capone? Well, eventually Al Capone in 1931 is actually uh, arrested. He's not arrested for any of his gangster crimes, you know, murdering, uh, prohibition, things like that, he's actually sentenced to 11 years in prison for not paying his taxes. Um, so they got him on that, on that one. Okay, so then we'll go on and have a look at Im immigration now. Okay, now I've split these up into push factors and pull factors. So it says two reasons why Europeans wanted to emigrate or come to America. I've put them in push and pull factors because sometimes it's a bit easier to kind of remember them like that. So these push factors are pushing you away from your country. Okay, so many European towns and cities were overcrowded. There wasn't very much housing. So that's going to push you, want you to leave that town or city. And um, there was great poverty in Europe, terrible housing, poor health, bad diet. That, again, is going to want you to push, push you away from that country to find somewhere else to live. Um, much of Europe was divided by class. OK, so it's difficult for working class people to improve their lives. And then various groups were actually prosecuted, uh, persecuted even, sorry, for their religious or, or political beliefs. Um, so just an example there, Russia restricted the number of Jews who were allowed in schools and even attacked, uh, attacks against Jewish people were common. OK, that's just one example there. But those are the push factors that are making you want to leave um, your town or your city or your country. And then these are the pull. Why would you go to America? Well, these are the reasons why it's pulling you actually to America. So you've got the American dream. Uh, America prides itself on the idea that everyone had the right to achieve. Uh, particularly appealing to these working class people, okay, who had been in European cities. And um, the standard of living is higher in America. So American workers are actually paid 
on average twice as much, double as much as people in other countries. So that's why you would want to be pulled particularly to America. Um, American land was cheap and fertile. So if you were a farmer, you could go to America and hope to make a lot more money. Um, and there's plenty of jobs, particularly in things like coal and steel or textiles, okay, uh, which might pull you, attract you to go to America. Okay, so why, uh, explain why uh, the USA began to limit its immigration. And there's a number of reasons, so I've just kind of split them up here. Um, in some cities, places like Chicago, New York, etc., new immigrants from Southern and European, uh, Eastern European uh, countries were resented. These, these people who were coming were often poor, uh, didn't speak English very well, had unfamiliar traditions, for example, they were Jewish or Catholic, um, and America, remember, is Protestant, uh, mostly Protestant. So this, they've got, you know, different religions, different languages, different cultures, um, so that's sometimes why they weren't accepted. You've got another reason large ethnic communities developed uh, in many large cities like Italy, Little Italy. So they're not integrating within cities, which might have created a bit of resentment. And World War I added to America's suspicion of foreigners, uh, as did the Russian Revolution. So America starts to be worried, particularly about Russian immigrants, particularly Eastern European immigrants, that they might do the same. They might revolt, bring communism to America. Okay, so those are some of the issues with uh, immigration. Right, let's move on to racial tension. So explain why there are so, uh, so much racism in southern states. I've come up with three reasons here. Um, so there are more black people than white people in, Amer in the South. Um, and because of this, this causes some push for racial prejudice and fear, really fear that uh, African-Americans might end up, you know, rightfully wanting control, power, things like that. So this kind of leads to white politicians often driven by racial prejudice and fears, try to keep control by passing these Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws are effectively laws which allowed segregation. Okay, so separate education, separate buses, uh, separate restaurants, separate areas of the cities that you would live in, that kind of thing. Um, and unfortunately, that meant that the justice system, because of things like the Jim Crow laws, was not equal. Um, many judges, sheriffs, police were white and therefore often wanted to keep that power for themselves and feared um, any power that African Americans might end up gaining. Okay. Harlem, I've been to Harlem, and it's beautiful. It's a really interesting place to go. So if you do go to New York, do go and pay a visit to Harlem. Um, Harlem's a neighborhood in New York, and it ends up becoming this center of creativity, black culture, black pride. There's lots of things like jazz clubs there. Um, it's called the Black Renaissance. It's very much a um, celebration of African-American culture. Um, but it also shows, so it says here, what did it show? I think it also shows that there is still segregation, even within towns and cities that don't follow Jim Crow laws, which were predominantly in the South. There is still this segregation and isolation uh, between white Americans and African Americans. Um, okay, so what popular film comes out in 1915? depicts the KKK's heroes, it's the birth of the nation, and even the president at the time, Woodrow Wilson, actually says, wasn't that an accurate view of, of uh, African Americans? It's not at all an accurate view, but it's, um, it is a depiction of KKK's heroes. Give two ways black Americans were discriminated against in southern states, so I've actually got four here. Okay, so they're often the last to be hired, the first to be fired. They lived in the worst housing and poorest areas. Some factories only employed white workers or paid back, uh, those who did employ them paid black workers the lowest wages. 
And there were even uh, race riots, and there's one there that happens in 1919. Okay. So that's racial tension. Now we get on to this fear of uh, immigrants. Um, okay, so what is Red Scare? I've kind of tried to split it up here. It gives you a bit of a background, um, then it gives you some inf information of what's happening at the start in, uh, of 1919, and then what ends up happening, particularly in the 1920s. Okay, so some Americans felt that immigrants brought un-American ideas into their country. Now that recaps what we've just looked at, particularly this fear of communism, um, because in 1917, remember, we've got the Russian Revolution. And actually, you get an increase in Russian uh, immigrants to America. You get 1.5 million Russians had come to America. Um, and that increases that fear that these Russian immigrants might end up bringing communism. Um, and then you end up with the uh, American Communist Party that's actually set up in 1919, and you end up with an increase in industrial unrest. Now, that's not necessarily just down to the growth of communism in America. There is also this demand for better wages and conditions, too. Okay. Then we've got in 1919, uh, in the middle of 1919, uh, an attack that happens, a bomb that happens in the house of a, a guy called Alexander Mitchell Palmer. And he is important because if you can notice here, you've got the Palmer raids that happen in the 1920s. That's as a response to this guy, okay, uh, Alexander Mitchell Palmer. He's the man who's in charge of American law and police, and uh, his house is bombed. And next to the uh, body of the suicide bomber is a communist newspaper. Now, we don't know whether that was set up or not, but that definitely means that Palmer then goes on like a rampage against uh, communists in particular. OK, later that year, you have another bomb that happens in New York and 30 people are blown up. Uh, the bomber is not identified, so we don't know that they are communist or an anarchist, but it leads to this fear, oh, they could have been communist. And so it just increases this tension. And then in particular, in the 1920s, you end up with what we call the Palmer Raids. Okay, uh, Palmer said he wanted to get rid of American communists. He has nicknamed them the Reds. If you think about communist flags, think about the Chinese flag, think about the uh, Russian Revolution flag, they are red, okay, they're symbolic there, that's why he's labelled them red. Um, during the Palmer Raids, and these are important facts that we know, okay, you've got around 6,000 suspected communists were arrested in 33 cities, okay, so do make sure when you're doing these notes you know these facts and these dates because they will definitely help you with your revision. OK, and then this period as a consequence uh, is known as the Red Scare. And then we've got a famous case um, of Sacho and Vanzetti that happens. So I give you a bit of a context here. It says the question is explain what the case uh, Sacho and Vanzetti showed uh, about America in the 1920s and why. So. Sacco and Vanzetti were Italian-born immigrants, they're anarchists, they're known anarchists. Anarchists are people who want a different government, change the government, okay? Um, they're charged with robbing a shoe factory and murdering two staff members uh, in, in April 1920. Now remember, this is at the same time that you've got things like the Palmer Raids going on. So you've got this fear of communism, anarchism already, uh, really rife, really obvious in America. However, there is no conclusive evidence. They actually have people testify, say, witnesses say that they weren't there, okay? But the jury found them guilty. Even the judge, um, Thayer, says uh, that Vanzetti, in particular, may not have actually committed the crime, but he is morally to blame because he is our enemy. So he's just blaming him because he's an anarchist, not because there's any proof. The trial was reported all over the world. Uh, there is huge worldwide demonstrations against the verdict. The verdict is that they are found guilty and that they are actually sentenced to death. 
There is um, lots of attempts to try and get them off, but actually they are uh, executed on the 23rd of August 1927. They have actually recently, in the last, I can't remember, decade or so, been pardoned by the president because uh, they now think they weren't guilty. But at the time that we're talking about, okay, they were found guilty and some people, lots of protests say um, that it shows real racism and real intolerance in America because they were found guilty only because of their race and anarchistic ideas rather than their actions. And I think you can kind of agree with that because if you think about this, even the judge says they might not morally be to blame, but they are our enemy. Okay, so he's saying even without our evidence, they're to blame. So hopefully that helps you fill out um, those questions and that information, okay, on particularly on the problems and challenges in the 1920s. I want to now have a look then at this exam question, okay? So um, I've written one of the paragraphs for you just to help you give an idea of your structure. I haven't done the Ku Klux Klan, mainly because students um, find that one, I was going to say easier, but maybe maybe easier is the right word to answer so i've done the red scare one okay to give you a bit of an idea so you need to make sure please that you're writing in this p structure what's your point what's your evidence and what's your explanation okay the question is which of the following has the greatest impact on america okay so you need to look at the ku klux klan there in a paragraph you need to then look at the red scare in the paragraph here, which I'll go through. And then you need to make sure, please, that you are having this conclusion, which has a greatest impact, the Ku Klux Klan or the Red Scare on America, okay? And be really clear in that conclusion because that can get you some really good marks there. Make sure you've got things like the uh, keywords, lynching, palm raids, etc. Okay, so let's go through my paragraph quickly. Um, what would be my point? So I've said Red Scare had a great impact on America in the 1920s. Can you see how I've tried to use the wording that's in that question? Great impact, okay. Uh, because it caused widespread fear of immigrants, communists and anarchists. I tried to be to the point there. Evidence, quite a lot of evidence here, stuff that we've already talked about. So I've said this is shown by the Sacco and Vanzetti case where two Italian-born immigrant anarchists were charged with robbing a shoe factory and murdering two staff, okay? There's no conclusive evidence, but the judge found them guilty. I've even quoted it there. Um, and then I've also mentioned the Palmer Raids. So also during the Palmer Raids, around 6,000 suspected communists were arrested in 33 cities, but, this, uh, but little evidence of the communist plots was found. So that's my evidence. You can see there's quite a lot of facts there, quite a lot of dates, those key terms, which are really important. And then I've explained it. So therefore, this shows that the Red Scare significantly impacted America. This is important. This is the question, okay? Make sure that you're making that reference back to that question. Okay, and I've said it's by causing fear of immigrants, tension within communities, and increased intolerance towards immigrants. This is also shown through the immigration laws, which by 1924 had imposed the National Origins Act, allowing only 150,000 immigrants to enter the USA each year from, I've just put in desirable or origins such as Northern Europe. Okay, so the explanation hopefully shows how Red Scare is impacting America through its intolerance and through its immigration acts. And then I've just given you a sentence starter here to help you with that conclusion. So in conclusion, the KKK, Red Scare, cross out which one you think is, uh, is not important, had the greatest impact because... OK, be really clear on which one has the biggest impact there. Hopefully that helps you just give you an idea of how to structure those paragraphs. OK, 
um, and shows you how much detail you could include. If you're filling out these worksheets in detail, that will obviously help you a lot with your revision and a lot with uh, those, uh, those exam questions. Okay, thanks guys. Have a lovely day.